Let's talk about Aphanomyces root rot of alfalfa. This is an important disease in the north central U.S., especially in soils that are heavier and stay wet for a long time. You've probably heard that alfalfa doesn't like wet feet. This means that it doesn't tolerate wet soils. This is partially because of the pathogens that flourish in wet soils that we call water molds. These water molds have modal spores called zoospores that infect the roots of the plants. Now, Aphanomyces was first discovered in alfalfa in the 1990s by researchers at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. They noticed that alfalfa cultivars that had resistance to another water mold called Phytophthora were still having problems with establishment, and they discovered the culprit was Aphanomyces. Now, the same pathogen infects pea, snap bean, and dry bean. So if you're having problems with alfalfa establishment, it would probably be a good idea to find out which of the water molds is causing problems in your field. Now, alfalfa breeders have been very successful in developing resistant varieties to Aphanomyces. You can see in this experimental field where a cultivar with no resistance to Aphanomyces was planted and that has poor establishment with many dead plants compared to cultivars with moderate resistance and high resistance. The most common seed treatment, Apron XL, also known as Mephanoxum, provides no protection from Aphanomyces. So seed treated with a fungicide called Stamina does provide protection for about 30 days. In the field, the symptoms of, of Aphanomyces root rot are seedlings with yellow to red leaves and seedlings that have emerged and then died, leaving the dead plant on the surface of the soil. If you dig up the plants, the roots of these plants will be yellowish and soft. This pathogen can also cause problems for adult plants anytime the soil gets saturated for long periods of time. Recently, heavy rainfall in late summer or early fall has resulted in alfalfa stands turning yellow due to Aphanomyces root rot. In this case, the pathogen has attacked the fine roots and including the root nodules, causing the plants to be stunted and yellow. The only way to tell if you have Aphanomyces in your soil is to submit a soil sample for a bioassay and we'll plant the seeds of resistant cultivars in this soil to see which Aphanomyces is present. There's two pathotypes of Aphanomyces that we call race 1 and race 2. Most alfalfa cultivars have resistance to race 1, but fewer have resistance to race 2. So it's important to know if you have race 1, race 2, or both races in your soil. I'll show you the steps in the bioassay and how we interpret the results. We request about a gallon bag of soil from the problem site in the field. The soil is screened to remove debris and rocks. We then put the soil into plastic containers and plant a cultivar that are susceptible to Aphanomyces and Phytophthora called Saranac. We also plant a cultivar called Agate that's resistant to Phytophthora. If Saranac seedlings die but Agate seedlings are healthy, we know that Phytophthora is present. For Aphanomyces, we plant a cultivar called WAF1 that's resistant to race 1 and WAF5 that's resistant to both race 1 and race 5. We let the seedlings grow for seven days. If we have poor seedling emergence, that tells us that there are seed rot organisms present, probably Pythium and Fusarium species. To get infection by Phytophthora and Aphanomyces, we flood the soil for three days. After the plants have grown for 21 days, we remove them from the soil and examine the roots. If WAF1 and WAF5 seedlings are healthy, but agate is diseased, then we know that race 1 is present. If only the WAF5 seedlings are healthy, we know that race 2 is present. In some soils, we've seen all plants getting diseased, which indicates that there are other pathogens causing problems. Identifying these pathogens is a primary research area in my laboratory. Our goal is to help plant breeders develop cultivars that have multiple pest resistance for alfalfa grown in wet soil.